You know what it is. That's right. It's time to talk money with your money nerd and financial coach. Now, tighten those purse strings and open those ears. It's the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. So today I have Rashad Muhammad on the line, and we are live here in Atlanta. Um, We just decided to come down for different reasons, um, but we were like, while we're here, let's just go ahead and do a podcast episode. So I want to shout out really quick. Tambor Sound Solutions. Um, That's the podcast studio that we're using right now. So if y'all are ever in the Atlanta area, please check them out um, because it's dope, as you can see in here. Um, (laughs) So with that being said, I have Rashad here. Rashad is a school administrator in Texas, and I'm excited to have him on because him and his wife, Nirvana, which I love her name, um, they paid off over $85,000 in debt in two years, y'all, two years. So I wanted to get him on here to just talk about what their process was for that. He is a wealth building educator, so he's passionate about financial education and literacy, just like I am, and I'm trying to give y'all all the juice. So Rashad, thank you so much for coming on. Hey, Tiffany, I appreciate you having me on Money Talk with Tiff. <laughs> no problem. So let's just hop right into it. I'm an administrator, she's a teacher, and that's how we got out of debt, just, you know, clamping down on the debt and getting rid of it. So Awesome, awesome. And so, you know, I wanted to point out what you all do, because a lot of people have this conception that this misconception that teachers, <laughs> you know, even though, you know, the pay, they say the pay is not good, whatever, there's still possible to get out of debt regardless. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's possible to get out of debt. I think ultimately, regardless what your career is, you need to get a handle of where you are with with your debt. I mean, you have doctors who make hundreds of thousands of dollars who are drowning in debt, and you have teachers who become millionaires. So wherever you are, you know, on a pay scale, you have the opportunity to get out of debt. You just need to ultimately find out where you are, and you need to understand what your debt looks like. And that's the first step. Yes. So awareness. Awareness is key. And I preach about that on the podcast all the time, how you have to be aware of your numbers, because if you don't know where you're sitting debt wise, income wise, expenses wise, then there's no way possible that you can make any type of headway uh, because you don't know where you're starting. So when you all decided, like, what was that one moment where y'all were like, okay, enough is enough. We got to tackle this. (laughs) Oh, I think, well, ultimately, that word awareness is huge. Like, so I totally agree with you. The thing about us is that we had that, you know, we had that epiphany many times, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the the whole tired of being tired, enough is enough. We had that so many times. And ultimately, we had one final straw. And I can't remember what that, that moment was, but I do remember my wife came to me and she said, you know, we got to get out of debt. And it was her birthday. And she said, we need to sell our, our car. And once she did that, she came to me. That was it. You know, that's when the $85,000 started dwindling down. But mm. it was really my wife getting on board with the plan and coming to me and saying, it's time. Because she understood that I was in a position where I couldn't sleep at night. Mm. She would sleep okay, you know. But I'm the one who was always stressing over the debt. And, you know, when she came to me, we we finally sat down and made a plan. And You know, that was the beginning. And, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's so important, Um, especially when you have couples and and married couples, long term, committed relationship, whatever you're in. If you all are in a situation like that, being on the same accord is so important Um, because, you know, maybe one person has this big dream of being debt free. The other person's like, eh, debt, it's fine. You know, I don't really care about it too much, but. Both of those people have to come together and say, "Okay, what's important to us? What's going to make us grow as a couple? Um, And so I'm glad that you pointed that out, that you all had that epiphany. It was like, "Okay, you know what? We got to work together on this. Yeah. And opposites attract. Right. So you're going to have one spouse who is really into the spreadsheets and who who really understands where every dime is going. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have one that's a free spirit. And my wife was a free spirit. I was the one who really was the money nerd. I knew where all every penny, every dime was going. And she didn't understand what my stress was like. So until we were able to get on one accord and and have those conversations, which were difficult conversations, right? I mean, until we were able to get on the same page, we weren't going to get out of debt. But once we got on the same page, we were literally unstoppable after that. 
And I do need to stress that the first step you would take, of course, is awareness. Mm -hmm. But once you are aware that you have a problem, you have to sit down. You have to do like a net worth statement. You you really need to find out where you stand, mm -hmm. because until you do that, you really it's like you're, you know, walking blind. Right, right. And I will tell y'all the whole mental accounting thing, it does not work. It doesn't work. <laughs> it has to be on paper, you know, or on a spreadsheet. It needs to be in black and white so you can have a clear picture of what's going on. Because um, a lot of times we think we're doing better than what we are mm -hmm. or we think we're doing worse than what we yes. are, you yes. know, and either extreme, we start making decisions that may hinder our true goals. Yep. So um, I'm so glad that you came to that conclusion and was able to say, okay, we're aware now. Now, where do we go from here? How do we... So did you all do a lot of budgeting? To be honest with you, we, we didn't even necessarily budget as mm -hmm. much as we wanted to. We just, so what we did, we ended up making debt the first payment. We mm -hmm. knew we had to pay the piper. So as soon as we got paid, the, the first payment that went out was always our debt payment. Mm -hmm. And then from there, that's when we really created like a flexible budget where we knew we had between eight hundred to fifteen hundred dollars a month to spend on whatever expenses we may have, like as far as the kids' clothing, groceries, gas, things like that. And then from there, we we might have allocated a, a few dollars a month for like fun and things like that. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, the most important thing at that time was getting out of debt. So we the first line item was really debt payments. And once you know, once you have that put down on paper, then you know that. You I have a finite amount of time until we're debt free as long as we stick to this plan. Awesome. 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 So you were able to model that all out and then show your wife and say, OK, look, here's where we are. Here's where we can be in X amount of years as long as we stick on this this track. And bam, you did it. Yeah, absolutely. So one other good thing about putting your your finance, your numbers on paper and doing a budget is that. You, you see exactly where you are, you see where you stand, you see where you're going, but it also feels like you're giving yourself a, a raise because you're just in the dark and then all of a sudden you see the light. So mm. that's what we did and we were able to see, okay, this is how much money we were blowing every month. Mm. Now we're gonna reallocate this towards paying off our debt. And then we know once these 24 to 36 months are up, then we can reallocate that towards paying ourselves. Mm, mm. And oh, you said so much in what you just said. There's so many gems there because at the end of the day, you have to um, mm, you have to know your inflows and outflows, but then also prioritizing where your money's going. So when you all started, y'all didn't even have a budget, but you knew okay, we got to pay off this debt. So this money's going to go there. Then once you all started making headway, you're like, well, we definitely have to pay ourselves too. So during this time where you were paying off that amount of money, um, did you all have like savings to fall back on or were you doing both things subsequently or? So we did the whole baby steps thing, right? So ah, we had Dave the, Ramsey. Yeah, we had the thousand dollars <laughs> over here and mm -hmm. we knew that with a thousand dollars, it was not going to really cover a true emergency. So I guess the good thing about that plan is that it really forces you to get intentional about getting out of debt, because if there is a monumental emergency, you're not going to, you're going to have to go right back right, into debt. Right, right, right. So as long as you have your little thousand dollars to the side and then you're aggressively paying down your debt, the quicker you get out of debt. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, once I'm debt free, now I can start reallocating that debt, debt payment to myself and I can beef up that emergency fund. So and, and the amazing thing is, like, when the more money you have, those emergencies don't necessarily come. And it's just a, it's a weird thing, you know. But when you broke, the emergencies <laughs> always seem to show up. Yes. And you know what? Like, part of what I believe in that is that we all have financial karma, right? And so at the end of the day, if we owe a lot of people or we have a lot of debt or, you know, things aren't going right financially for us, we need to start paying more attention, start tackling that, making that a little less so that and giving more. So that way the money can start flowing in. And like you said, Rarely you'll have a true emergency, um, but it's because you've already prepared. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, so when you are financially responsible and you have that money saved up, those emergencies then really become inconveniences. So now if I bust a tire or something, a nail gets in my tire, now I'm frustrated because 
I have to spend a couple of hours I didn't expect to spend going to get that tire fixed as opposed to having to worry about where that money is coming from, like mm. putting it on a credit card and then paying it off two or three months later after a $400 tire is now, what, $500 because of interest. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if you were responsible, then those emergencies become inconveniences. Mm. And you said another key word, like giving. Now, you know, you, you, you might see a mother and her three kids out eating and you don't feel guilty paying for their meal because you you can afford it. Is whereas before, if you want to help somebody out like that, you, you feel like you're cheating your fa your own right, family right, <laughs> because, right, by right. paying for somebody else. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah, don't, don't, giving is another really good reason to get out of debt. Absolutely, absolutely, and it also just frees up your mental because mm -hmm. it's not something that you're thinking about all the time, which is what happens, you know, when you have like the uh, poverty mindset or you're constantly coming from a place of lack, which you know. Growing up, I didn't have a whole bunch and I didn't learn a lot about money. But as I started to, you know, move up in my career, started budgeting, things like that, it was like things just started flowing. And then once things started flowing, I started Money Talk with Tim. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I was able to free up my mental a little bit and be more creative and think outside the box yeah. um, instead of being in the the day to day grind all the time. Um, so I'm so glad that you said that now. Fast forward, because you all are now on track to become millionaires yeah. um, within the next, what, two to three years? Yeah, that's the goal. But the thing, <laughs> the, the funny thing is, I, sometimes I still like don't feel, I still feel broke sometimes because <laughs> we're saving so much. Like, and we save a lot of money pre-tax. So like, I don't even see it. And mm -hmm. I do that on purpose mm -hmm. so that it's not in the account like tempting yes. us, you know, if it's like post-tax money you're putting in a brokerage account. If you want to go on a vacation, a cruise or something, you just literally pull it from that account. But the way we do our retirement savings is that it's, it's pre-tax. Mm -hmm. So we can't just go in there and, you know, take that money out for a vacation or a PS5 or anything like that. So we got to be we still got to be responsible, you know. So I purposefully re and it reduces taxes, too. So we try to save as much money as we can pre-tax and. You know, we're, we're heading that direction, hopefully two or three years. But it's one of those things where I just I don't, I don't necessarily feel like it. I know we're going to be comfortable, but I just don't. You can't tell by the cars we drive or anything like that, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> we're just yes, trying yes. to provide options for ourselves. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I just want to point out a few things with what you said. First is taking things out pre-tax or as soon as it comes in. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. way you don't miss it. So I know when I was in corporate, right, every time I got a raise, I didn't act like I got a raise. You know, a lot of time we have lifestyle creep, right? Yeah, so like as we make more money, our lifestyle starts matching the money that we make in. And then we look around, we don't have it no more. Yeah. Right. Um, and that, that's called lifestyle creep. So if, if you like, let's say for instance, every time you get a raise or if you're an entrepreneur, you get a new client, you just start putting that money to the side and just living off what you was already living on. Then you are starting to build wealth on the back end, but you don't feel it. You know what I'm saying? You don't feel yeah. it. Um, so I, I'm so glad you said that because that's so true. And then also taking advantage of pre-tax benefits. Yeah. Like if you do work in corporate America or, you know, whatever it is that you do, if you have an opportunity to do the 401k, um, because a lot of people leave that money on the table. Mm -hmm. And when I was in HR, that broke my heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All that free money sitting on the table and people aren't taking advantage of yeah. it. So if you have the 401k available to you and your company doesn't match, at least put up to the match. But like Rashad was saying, they just go ahead and put as much as possible so that way later on they can make the short-term sacrifices now yeah. but a long-term gains going forward and, and you said something that made me i was cheesing for a few <laughs> minutes there because i have a video on my page where i talk about what to do with your raise mm -hmm. so i found out that in our district we were all getting like a three to three and a half percent raise and if you you know depending on how much money it is it, it could be an extra three or four hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. and what i said in that video is instead of taking that money after tax and blowing it or going to get a $700 car payment, reallocate that money, throw that towards a 403B or 401k, and you never know that. So you're getting a raise, but you never see that money. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of like a forced savings plan, forced retirement plan. So it's funny you say that because I have I have in a, a video 
speaking exactly of that scenario. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, because it because really it's the financially responsible thing to do, but it takes discipline, right? Because a lot of times if we get like let's say let's let's say a tax refund check, mm -hmm. right? We get a tax refund check, we like oh money, let's go see how much we can spend, you know, instead yeah. of having the mindset like let me see how much I can save of this, and then of course treat yourself a little bit, but always keep your goals and stuff to the forefront so that way <laughs> you know you can make headway on these things so Absolutely. um Rashad you mentioned you have a page so if people were interested in finding out more about you um finding out about your story tuning into your podcast where can they find you so I'm big on YouTube at uh, the wealth building educator and you can email me at the wealthy educator at gmail.com if you have any questions but you know we're doing coaching and those kind of things and, and I, I'm also a realtor in the Fort Worth area. So I have met clients through YouTube. I really enjoy that aspect as well. You know, we're just trying to do big things. And I think within our community in particular, the money, the money topic is so taboo. And I don't understand why we have such a hard time discussing money amongst ourselves. But I just think people like you and I having these conversations will, you know, break down some barriers and allow us all to begin building wealth together. Absolutely. And not hoarding, right? Yes. So we yes. have a hard time sometimes sharing this information with others, thinking that they're going to get more than I have. When I think that the more of us that are wealthy, the more prosperous we can be. Exactly. Exactly. And see, that's the thing. Like what we do is so crucial to our community because it's like you said from the beginning awareness right you don't know what you don't know yeah. so maybe something that we said today sparked somebody else and they're like oh i never thought about that but now you have that awareness and now you know so now you can start implementing and we can have more black millionaires right absolutely <laughs> right absolutely so um if you didn't get all of that i will have all of rashad's information in the show notes so definitely check those out either in the comments or if you just click um if you're listening to the podcast, just click on the cover art. You can check out the show notes. But thank you so much, Rashad, for coming on. It is a pleasure. And I'm so grateful that you all actually went along with this madness <laughs> and came on the podcast. Well, the pleasure is all mine. I appreciate you having me on your platform and continue doing what you do and spreading the word. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you so much. I appreciate you. Bye. Thank you for listening, joining, and being a part of the Money Talk with Tiff podcast this week. You can check Tiff out every Thursday for a new Money Talk podcast. But if you just can't wait until next week, you can listen to previous podcast episodes at moneytalkwitht.com or follow Tiff on all social media platforms at Money Talk with T. Until next time, spend wise by spending less than you make. A word to the money wise is always sufficient.